Hello everyone, welcome to series three of the GBA Lightbulb Sessions. The Great British Entrepreneur Awards in association with BT Skills for Tomorrow have designed a free live stream series of Lightbulb Sessions to support small businesses and entrepreneurs with insightful and advice driven sessions featuring some of the UK's brilliant entrepreneurial minds to illuminate your path to entrepreneurial success. You can find out more about BT Skills for Tomorrow by heading to their website at www.bt.com forward slash skills for tomorrow or by clicking on the link in the comment section. In today's session, Great British Entrepreneur Awards Head of Content, Jonathan Davis, will be speaking with Tej Lavani. Best known for his role as Dragon on the BBC hit show Dragon's Den, Tej will share top tips and advice on negotiating from selling big deals to winning an investment and more. It goes without saying that Tej over the years has become a master of negotiation, wrapping up a number of impressive deals, both inside and outside of the den. With vast experience in helping grow and diversify businesses, Tate will explain why negotiating is one of the most valuable skills you can have both personally and professionally. There is an opportunity to ask questions during this session. If you have a question you'd like to ask, you can pop this in the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen and we'll do our best to answer these towards the end of the session. Please note that there will be a poll at the end of today's session and all answers will be anonymous. And with that, I'll pass over to our host today, Jonathan Davis. Yeah, thank you, Chloe. Um, good morning, good afternoon, wherever in the world you are. I've already seen that we've got someone from uh, from Prague joining us today. Um, Tej, thank you so much for, for joining us. It's a real, real pleasure to, to have you here. Um, and I, I guess it'd be a great place to start. Uh, I, you know, I'm sure the vast majority of, uh, of, of attendees with us today know at least a little bit about uh, about who you are and your story, especially from, from Dragon's Den. But I, I guess for, for avoidance of doubt, um, it'd be good just to, to hear a little bit more about, about you and your story. Yeah, so obviously with uh, Vitabiotics, um, I've been there for over 20 years. The business was uh, founded by my father, who's a scientist, came up with the true multivitamin formulations back then. And as a kid, I've always been fascinated with health, with uh, business and uh, gravitated towards it. And, you know, as uh, the years have gone by, my mission and goal has been to build it into the number one specialist vitamin company in the world and with launching new brands and different categories and different areas. Um, there's been a really exciting uh, journey, of course, making it global and, uh, and having some of the leading brands in the country in health. Um, and of course, my journey into Dragon's Den, you know, um, it's now been five years since I joined Dragon's Den. It's been a phenomenally exciting time coming across so many businesses um, in the last um, last five years. Every year we see about 100 different businesses uh, make investments, working with entrepreneurs. Uh, it's been a, uh, you know, a, a great experience. Yeah, excellent. And, and I I'm, believe I'm correct in saying that, uh, that uh, one of uh, one of the businesses that appeared on the, on the show Super U, uh, you invested in, uh, one of our winners from I believe last year if not last year 2019 certainly so uh it's great to uh, to see that connection there as well yeah they're a great bunch of entrepreneurs um and they've done really well with their products and of course it's similar space to mine in terms of health yeah yeah absolutely um but obviously we're we're here today to talk about um the art of negotiation so um so we'll we'll, we'll get into that um and something that chloe mentioned in uh in her intro uh was that you've talked quite a bit about in the past about the importance of negotiating skills, not only in your business life, but your, uh, your personal life as well. Um, so I, it'd be good to kind of explore that and, and understand a bit more about what you mean by that. So with negotiation, and I think people will relate to this, you use it in every part of your life, whether it's with your family, with friends, whether it's, you know, going to a restaurant or whether it's negotiating with your kids to get something done. So it's something that you have to use all the time. And I think therefore it's really an important skill to, to try and master and learn because you'll be able to using it in different situations. And, um, you know, negotiation is really the difference between a complete change in your life or in your career, getting the right negotiation done can really change your future. So, you know, in all walks of life, choosing the right partner, uh, for instance, and so I'm a great believer of, you know, trying to learn as much as you can and have as many tools as you can in your bag to be able to negotiate the best way. Yeah, absolutely. It's really interesting. You, uh, you mentioned uh, with, with kids there kind of, I, I haven't tweeted, I've got a, a three-year-old and uh, probably about six months ago, he, he started negotiating with us. You know, we'd ask him to, um, you know, put his toys away and he'd be like, 
if I can have this, or, you know, if I can have <laughs> a biscuit, I'm like, what? <laughs> kids, so, kids are one of the toughest negotiators. Uh, uh, I, I think they, they're they born with some sort of negotiation skills, so it is hard and they, they don't budge sometimes. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and interesting, obviously, talking about the, the personal life uh, there and kind of or outside of um, outside of business. Do you think that the art has kind of been lost in, in wider society? Because, I mean, from a personal point of view, you know, if I went to a um, if I went to a local market or a, um, a car boot sale, I, I probably wouldn't dream of negotiating or, you know, obviously the, the haggling is the quite common common term in, in that situation. You know, I, I personally would look and go, OK, that's the price. I'll decide whether or not I want to pay that. Do you think the art has been lost in, in wider society? I think it's a skill that really needs to be understood better. And, you know, if the education system provides some sort of negotiation tips as how to understand the psychology, approaching a deal, you know, making it a win win um, for sure. And people take it for granted. They, as you say, sometimes you'll go, uh, you'll buy something and people say you don't ask, you don't get. Uh, and that is quite true because, you know, it depends how you ask it. It's not a matter of just saying, look, give me 20 percent off or 30 percent off. It's about how you build a rapport with that person and, um, you know, make them laugh or whatever it is. And then people like to do business with people they like. And I think if you if you can understand a few principles, I think for sure your your negotiation skills and what you get from it, the value you get from it is going to be a lot, a lot of gain. Yeah, absolutely. And so you, you mentioned there that people like to negotiate with people that they like. Um, so in terms of your approach, uh, when you're negotiating, do you kind of have a style and you stick to it or do you kind of tailor it depending on which business, which individual that you're, that you're negotiating with? Well, I think the most important thing about knowing how to negotiate really is understanding the needs and wants of that person you're dealing with. Because if you can identify that and then in priority, what the next most important thing is, you're more likely to, to have a deal and negotiate your best deal. So I would spend time focusing on that. And I don't particularly use one type of negotiation style. I'll, I'll use it from a bag uh, that I've got in terms of what I think is going to make a real difference and it's going to get what I need ultimately. Like if you're looking about in Dragon's Den, you've got an entrepreneur coming in there and it's important to understand more about the entrepreneur, their financial situation, their business, what's really important to them. Because for instance, an entrepreneur, it could be money that's important. It could be the value that you provide that's important. Um, it, it could be the, the facilities or, you know, what the, the equity is important to them not to give too much equity away. So if you understand that firsthand, and then when you're competing for a deal with the other dragons, you'll understand maybe money is not the most important thing. So it's really what value you can provide. Then I'll start talking about the, the type of, um, um, you know, introductions I could do or, you know, how synergistic my business is to theirs. Um, if it's, you know, about money, then you talk about, okay, you know, you want 50,000, I'll offer you 100,000 instead, because I think your business is going to need that over time. If equity is an issue, then you use a negotiating style to say, look, you know, 20% for 50,000, but then I'll drop back to 10% when I get my money back. So they feel they've still owned part of the business. But I think that's why it's fundamentally important to understand really what their needs are, because sometimes you could be hitting a brick wall. And that only comes through to either doing research or through asking questions in the right way that you get information from them. And with Dragon's Den, obviously it's, you know, you have a short amount of time to get that amount of information and the questions you need to have. So your questions have to be very specific. Um, you know, is there a lot of debt on the balance sheet? Because that can make a difference as well. You know, say, okay, guys, you know, you don't have to pay off the loan, maybe after a year. So I think the more you know, the better it is really in negotiating. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 how difficult is it in, in that kind of situation where, you know, let's say someone comes to comes to the den, it's a fantastic prospect. Everything is looking perfect. You, you know, it's something that you 100% think, yes, I want to invest in. But like you said, perhaps, um, you know, perhaps it's a, we often see it's a, a more techie business and, and, you know, they might favor uh, Peter Jones. How difficult is it for you in that position to, to really realize, yes, this is a fantastic opportunity, but I'm not the best person for it. How difficult is it to kind of balance that out? Well, 
there's, there's a couple of strategies. One is that maybe you partner with a dragon who's it's more their line of work and you could add a different type of value. So sometimes entrepreneurs prefer two dragons instead of one. And, you know, sometimes you just got to understand that this is their area of expertise. Like if, you know, um, Super U or if it's Nursem, if it's consumer product, healthcare, I know that I'm the best dragon for them in terms of the doors I can open, whether it's UK international or if it's marketing or branding. Um, and then you just focus on those skills or you try and see if, if, it's a, if it's a tech company and Peter's got those introductions, maybe I can help with fundraising or I can help with the branding aspect of the business. And then so they'll need that in terms of marketing and creating brands. And that's what we do day in, day out is to create brands like Wellman, Wellwoman, Pregnant Care, uh, make them into household names. So that's you know, my area of expertise. So you just have to figure out what's, what, what, what's a key factor and then see how yours can apply, even though it's a different industry. And I think coming into the den for the first time, initially the businesses I, I thought I would invest in are really focused in my area because that's where I could add expertise. But ultimately you realize businesses are businesses and you know they have the same principles. So you can add value to a business whether it's completely in a different industry altogether. Um, you know, I invested in a, in a wool business, um, a wool knitting business. I never thought, you know, looking at the products there when the entrepreneur walks in, I'm gonna invest in this business. But then you understand the entrepreneur, the product, the potential, and then you make a decision based on that and see how you can add value to it. And how could I have added a value to a knitting business, I thought. But, but in terms of distribution, in terms of introductions, all that made sense and that's how uh, I got the deal. Yeah, uh, excellent. Um, and when you, uh, in the past, do you ever kind of over pitch um, what you're asking for in, in, in hope that, you know, what you actually want uh, to get out of the deal is, you know, it comes across as a, a compromise. Look, I mean, that's a, a, a very good strategy to use because people feel they want to get a deal. So sometimes you'll probably realize I'm going to push this much knowing that you're going to, you can climb down to this point. Um, or if I say, look, they're asking for, uh, you know, they want to give away 10%. I'll say, look, I'm asking for 35%, knowing that I may drop to 25% with a bit of negotiation. So it feels a negotiation because everyone wants to feel they've got a deal They've got value from the from the relationship or from the transaction. So I think there's a bit of that in, in most deals. And it does make strategic sense to do that sometimes. What you don't want to do is completely, you know, uh, over uh, ask and it, it just sort of looks bad. And then you're, you're too far apart from where you negotiate. So you want to be sensible, leave some room for negotiation always, I think, is, is a good strategy. Absolutely. Um, and what you, you mentioned kind of understanding what the um what a business uh wants from from a deal and um, you know sometimes you'd be able to to get that uh, ahead of time um other times not leading into negotiations what sort of uh what sort of research do you carry out on a business before you uh, before you enter the negotiations um well i'll try and ask people if they've dealt with them before to understand what their style of negotiation is. Uh, do they like to drag out negotiations? Do they want a, a quick deal to be done? And, you know, understand the financials of the business. Is it a situation where cash is important? Because then you have different strategies as to say, look, uh, you know, it's 30%, 40%, 100%, I'll pay you 75% upfront or 100% upfront cash flow is important to them, then you know that, you know, you get a, a better deal by offering them the money. Or for instance, it could be a situation where time is important. So, you know, they're so busy with businesses, they, they can't deliver. You'll say, look, you know, um, I'll give you all the time you want. Instead of doing it in a month, you can do it for me in four months, but just give me a better deal on the price. So then that could be a strategy. So the more you know about them, the better. And uh, the different areas, of course, asking people around through, um, real research on the internet and then of course when you are negotiating with them then picking up those signs and telltale signs from when you're talking to them is very important and you know with Dragon's Den by by seeing so many people um, you get to understand people very well you know seven pitches a day 100 in a season uh, the entrepreneurs are there you you sort of figure out really what's where they're leaning towards what's important to them and, and, and accordingly, so you put it half your research beforehand, half your research actually at the time of negotiation to figure out what their 
uh, what their company is and you know where the strengths and weaknesses are yeah absolutely and, and i guess uh, something that you mentioned right at the start of that answer um about uh, you know asking people that, that you know i guess that that is quite particularly um valuable to to startups to younger entrepreneurs to people quite early on in their journey who you know perhaps haven't entered negotiations at all before um, so i guess that's quite valuable there to to make use of the network that they've got to to, to come across that absolutely i think mean, you know people under eight uh, the fact of just tapping into your own resource and network how much you can gain from it, whether it's to to help your own business or finding information out or negotiation, always try and ask for help if you can. You may get it, you may not get it, but from that, so many other things can happen. So always use your network and resources as much as you can. That's one of the things that attracts me to entrepreneurs to see how resourceful are they? You know, how much have they made use of the limited resources they have? Yeah, and, and something that you mentioned in the, the, the previous answer, um, about thinking about what you can offer, um, you know, whether it's uh, more money, more time, what you can offer as a business um, or, or an individual. Has, over the years, has negotiating helped you to understand uh, your business and yourself more? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. In terms of where your limits are, where their limits are, um, really what to ask for, because sometimes, in your head, you may think, okay, price is the most important thing, getting a better deal in terms of value. But actually, that might not be the best thing. For you, maybe the, the quality and the finished product and the service is more important than factoring on the price because that's going to have a knock-on effect. So to, trying to understand, as much as you understand the, entrepreneur, the, the person you're negotiating with, understanding what you really need from it. Because, uh, you know, sometimes easy, as, as I say, you know, maybe getting 20% off is the most, but that may not be the most important for you. Find out what's most important for you really um, to, to help you in your business, to get your, your deal done. Maybe it could be, you know, uh, if it's a long-term relationship, you'd think, actually, I don't mind losing a bit in the beginning because my long-term goal is to win on this point in future. If I get my fo foot in the door, okay, I might overpay a little bit here, but I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a better value down the line. So I think understanding those principles are very important and, and that comes with experience generally. As to as to what you need and what you think is important. Yeah, excellent. And, and I was I was just about to ask about um, uh, balancing kind of thinking short term and long term. So uh, so answered that though, which which uh, which is excellent. Um, I want to talk about um, negotiating when there are other parties involved. Um, how much more difficult is that? So obviously, you know. In the den, you're sat next to the other dragons. You know exactly who they are. You can hear exactly what they're offering. Obviously, that's not always the um, the case uh, in, in the wider business world. How do you approach negotiations when you're not party to, to that information, what other businesses are offering? Good question. I think it's a lot more difficult not knowing and having those unknowns as to who else is in the bidding process? You know, you don't know what their checkbook size is. You don't know what their motivations are because you're not in front of them. And I think what to understand is to, because a lot of people, they'll extend the truth and you need to understand really what's a reality because people try and make it out sometimes that they've got so many orders in place. They've got this one contacting them, that one contacting them. And so you're not, you need to weed out really what is true, what they're saying? Are they over-exaggerating sometimes? Uh, are they not? And that comes through conversation and trying to understand where they are and you leave a certain offer, you let it sit and you see how they're responding. If they come back quickly, then you know that maybe what they said was a bit untrue about the fact that the other party is really keen on it as well. And, um, and the more you ask them, the more they'll tell you, or maybe you just even make a statement and people will correct you about the situation. You could say, you know, um, it looks like your other party, um, you know, they're in financial trouble or whatever. That, well, no, it's not actually. They've got a lot of cash, uh, you know. So then what, when you try and find out what the other party, their, their main focus is, then you focus on your strengths. Because I think what's important is to understand what value you can offer uh, that's different to what the other parties can offer. And that's what you've got to highlight in those type of negotiations where there's other parties involved and say, look, Nobody can provide what I'm going to provide in terms of this facility 
or can someone exchange and complete the same day? It was a property, uh, you know, many years ago, I remember I uh, bought a small studio flat in the time, uh, timing was the most important. Could you exchange and complete on the same day? Um, you know, so at that point I was able to get a good price because I could perform, but understanding other parties couldn't. So I think what you can bring to the table is important. You need to highlight that and say, look, no one else can do this. And then it's up to the person to say, okay, look, well, actually, maybe I don't mind taking a bit less because I know that they can perform or a good way is to get a recommendation from other people. Like if I'm doing a, a real estate transaction, I will get um, the top estate agents, the partners in the firm to send referrals about me to say they've traded with me for so many years. I know if I say I'm going to do something, I will do it um, and I will perform because nobody wants to be dragged down through months of negotiations. And at the end of the day, you back out, there's a huge opportunity cost there. So sometimes, um, they're prepared to do uh, a reduction knowing that they're dealing with a blue chip client. So that's what you've got to portray that you're different here from anybody else. So, so yeah, so that's essentially how you do it. Yeah. Excellent. And, and I wanted to get your thoughts on, um, on uh, your stance on, I think it's quite, quite common in, um, in, in this kind of space that some will prefer to um, under promise and over deliver. Some will, uh, over promise just to, to kind of get that deal through, but you know, run the risk of, uh, of, of not delivering. What's your stance on, on that? For me, I think it's always good to build up uh, a strong reputation, especially if you're married to that industry, you want to be the leader, you want to be the innovator and you want to be extremely reputable. So I think uh, saying, doing what you say is key to build up that track record. And if you can't deliver it, there's no point over promising. But in some circumstances, you know, uh, if you believe you can, but it's gonna take a lot of effort, then yes, I'd say do it. I mean, there's many examples in, in history. I mean, look at Microsoft with Bill Gates and he over promised and he didn't have the software he wanted to develop to sell to IBM, but he did it, but he knew he could do it. So I think, um, yes, it may seem a big leap, but if you know you can deliver it, then, then promise it. But ultimately you wanna make sure that when you deliver you can deliver what you promised and then build up that track record so people know you for someone who who backs up what they say in, in delivery and I think one of the mistakes people make also is that either they will over negotiate or under negotiate I think the key is to find the right balance because it's important to find at the breaking point of the other party as to at the point where they will not do a deal um, you don't want to squeeze them too much at that point because ultimately your quality of product or service is going to be sacrificed and you don't want an inferior product ultimately or you don't want it that the other party loses interest in, in the deal or the relationship and then you suffer there. And it's not worth those extra, you know, few one or two percent in, in price negotiations. So you find out that that point where they, they take it or leave it and then you want to go above that and offer them so that they are happy. People need to come out of a deal feeling that they've, that they're happy, it's a win situation. Uh, and sometimes people will under negotiate, they'll completely undersell themselves and they, they're not doing justice to, to what they, they, they can. So it's finding that balance and optimizing and not overstepping it because really it's about relationship as well and finding that good rapport with the party that you're, you're dealing with. You want them to like doing business with you so that you, they can not only do business again with you but also recommend you to other people um, to say, yeah, they're a solid party. I'd say do business with them, you know. So you don't they, they don't want to go back feeling they've been cheated by you. Yeah, definitely. And are there any tell tell telltale, if I could get my words out, telltale signs that that you should end a negotiation? So if for instance you're feeling that you're just too far apart there's no point continuing. And you know, there's, you know, they're up here, you're down there. Um, to get to anywhere near is going to take a long, long time and a lot of headache. I would leave it because there's just no point. Because if you do end up doing a deal, neither of you are going to be happy if it's that much apart. So that's a point where you should walk away. Um, you should walk away if the relationship breaks down. Um, so for instance, if it just gets a bit aggressive in the negotiation points and you feel that, once a deal is done, they're not going to be happy, uh, or you're not going to be happy, um, then there's no point doing that. Or if you just think that the, if it's if it's going to be a long-term relationship, if it's a service being provided and the chemistry is not there, then I wouldn't do it. 
you know, and, and these are the things, working with entrepreneurs as well and investing in businesses. It's so important to have that, that, that you want to do business with someone as well at the same time, especially if it's going to be over an extended period of time. If it's just buy a product and sell it, it's, it's different. You, you know, then you can just go ahead and do the transaction. Yeah, is that something that you find yourself doing uh, relatively often or, or do you more often than not kind of come to a deal? Um, you mean walking away versus doing a deal? Yeah. Um, yeah, so for me, uh, I want to go into a deal knowing that I need to get this deal done. Right. At one, I remember one time I was negotiating uh, with a Russian party to uh, to buy their stake in a business, and it you know it was literally um, an eight hour nonstop negotiation for the deal. I, I went in there knowing that I need to get this deal done. Whatever happens, to get them to agree to try and sell, and um, so you want to go in knowing that you're going to win, um, and ultimately where you land up within those parameters, number of parameters, stay within those parameters and try and get it done. You know, uh, otherwise just don't do, do a deal. I think, um, of course, there's certain circumstances where you, you don't mind losing it. And, and those are the situations where you probably sometimes get a better deal because you're not emotional. And that's the key. You, you, you have to try not be too emotional about it or not try and show your emotion uh, to the other party because if they think you really really want this they will they will know that okay this guy i've got him on a hook you know he he's gonna buy it no matter what so i'm not gonna budge i know he's gonna buy it anyway so there is a lot of psychology and it's a lot of games you know it's like going on a date with someone for instance sometimes people play games <laughs> what do you do so it's uh, it's uh, you have to play that game uh, to get what you want sometimes and um, not show your keenness and be prepared to walk away because that's where you find out where the, that limit of that person is to do a deal. Yes or no. Once you know that, then you say, okay, I think this is where it's going to settle in and you, you figure out your deal. Yeah. And, and I guess that kind of uh, links back to what you're saying earlier about understanding uh, who you're negotiating with and, and understanding what they want and, and, and kind of their personality, I guess. So um, that, that's really interesting. Um, I'm just conscious of, uh, of time because we've got uh, quite a lot of yeah. questions through. Um, uh, probably one last one from me and then we'll, we'll move on to the questions from the attendees. Um, I, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of the businesses that we that we work with with the Great British Entrepreneur Awards are smaller in size and perhaps um, earlier in their, their journey. And, you know, we're seeing a lot more now that, startups will have uh you know a sales director or a co uh, commercial director in place quite early on um you know responsible for securing deals uh, and things like that but how do you know as a ceo when it's time for for you to step in and, and take negotiations so i think the bigger deals automatically you'll try and negotiate yourself and i think the more deals you negotiate yourself, the more experience you get. And I think when you have uh, your management or people that are negotiating for you, you give them certain parameters and say, look, this is, um, this is where I need to be. You know, maybe a little bit is, uh, I can move this much, but that's where you need to try and get the deal done. And then you'll give them pointers and say, look, these are the key setting points. These are that and leave it to them and see how it is. And then, you know, they'll come back to you. And sometimes it's, it's a good way to do it because you don't want to have the decision maker sometimes in, in front of them because it gives them a reason to say, look, I need, I, I, unfortunately, I can't agree that. I need to speak to, to the board or I need to speak to someone senior to get back to you. And that, that makes the other party show that, okay, you know, they are really trying to try and get this done and they'll be lucky to get a deal in a way. So, so sometimes it can work to your favor not to negotiate. And sometimes when you, when you think it's an important deal, you want to get it done, then you'll, you'll step in and say, you know, the guy will say, look, I've taken it all the way to the top of the CEO, um, negotiate with him. And then they'll know they're getting a really good deal. They'll try their best, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, like I said, we've, uh, we've got plenty of, uh, of questions from the, uh, from the attendees. Uh, I, 
I highly doubt we're going to get to all of them, but we'll uh, we'll do our best. Um, so we've got one from, uh, and I really hope that I'm pronouncing this uh, correctly. Forgive me if uh, if it's wrong. Uh, from Suyog, uh, who says, "Hi Tej, uh, in the COVID scenario, how different is it to negotiate online uh, versus face to face?" Good question. I think if things have changed uh, almost permanently now, how you do deals, whether you you want to get um, um, a product into a store, for instance. And, you know, it's obviously better to do it in person. Uh, but of course, if it's physically not possible, I think you're on a level playing with everyone else. So it's not much different. I think you just have to work around it. And, you know, my wife started her business in the middle of the pandemic in October last year. Um, she had to um, meet buyers um, on, on Zoom, on Teams, and to be able to present and show a product because sometimes to show a product is a lot more difficult to do on Zoom than it is physically because people can touch and feel and sense and be more emotional about it. On a screen, it's a lot more difficult, but ultimately it is a level playing field. So um, you're not, uh, that's what it is, it's a relative. So if you're at a more of a disadvantage than someone else, then it's worse. But if you're on a level playing field, it's fine. If you just try and communicate as best as you can, um, uh, your terms, your product, you're still doing it face to face as a visual screen. It's better than doing it on a phone, of course. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Um, so we've got another one from Jack, um, who says that uh, he set up a globally operating uh, fish nutrition R and D business in 2014 in Wales, um, raised a million in 2019 to expand last year, um, and set up a company in Singapore uh, to replicate what they're doing in the UK. Uh, and Jack wants to know, uh, firstly, if you have any experience working in uh, Singapore um, and if you have any advice on uh, negotiating and, and I guess the kind of the differences between international uh, cultures, I guess. Yeah, so with Vitabiotics, we export to almost 100 countries internationally. And there's very different negotiating styles that you work with in different countries and you have different distributors in each country, we have exclusive distributors and partners in local markets and um, dealing with uh, cultures with, you know, how you negotiate, how hard you negotiate. Um, it takes time to understand that. And it's good to do your research because you don't want to completely offend someone while negotiating. Um, sometimes it's the custom not to negotiate. Sometimes it's custom to negotiate. So I think you need to try as much as you can. And of course, if you're dealing with a distributor, negotiating terms that are important, because ultimately you're dealing with a third party. You don't know the legal system. You don't want to be in a position where they're not paying you. How are you going to go after them? So cash is important. Money is up front. Uh, you know, commitment to, to deliver on their part, whether it's a three-year contract, for instance, you know, you don't want to be an open-ended contract with them where you're stuck if they're not selling. So you negotiate terms based on that, on how much are they going to put in to build your brand for you, whether they're going to put in their own money, or if you put in money, you say, look, if you sell X amount, 10% of that, I'll reinvest into marketing to support you in that business, because then you're not outlaying money, you're doing it if you sell. So there's different ways of trying to negotiate deal with distributors, but that is a very important way of getting your money, building your brand and trusting uh, a partner. I mean, some distributors we've worked with for over 20 years, some for a year. So, you know, it comes with experience. Brilliant. Um, we've got another one from Jeff uh, who asks, uh, what are the key numbers and metrics you look at uh, when considering a business proposition and how crucial are these numbers as a focus and starting point for negotiation? So is it for investing in a business or is it? Um, uh, uh, oh, it's just disappeared. Uh, they don't, they don't uh, clarify. Um, so I guess it would be good to, to get an answer, yeah. I guess, so, for so investing. So, 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 I'll just give you whatever I interpret that as. So um, for instance, in, in, in the den, for instance, if an entrepreneur comes in, uh, for me, it's very important to understand the figures because evaluation that they're quoting, if they've got half a million pounds in debt, then automatically the valuation should be half. So therefore it's important to understand that, um, understand their cash flow figures, what are they generating? Are they, is there a month on month growth? Is there a trend that, okay, every year the sales are decreasing? Because that either shows to me they are not good at, at selling or marketing or the, or the industry is declining. Um, so therefore data is extremely important in making a decision and financials and, and the health of the, of the, of the business. 
um, moving forward and what margins they have, for instance, if, if they've only got 10, 15% margin, there's no possible way to grow this business without making a loss and then requiring more cash down the future. If I know their margins are, you know, 3X, 4X, 5X, then I know they've got room to play. So I think that's a key, key factor. Brilliant. Um, we've got another question, which isn't uh, isn't related to uh, negotiating, but I think it'd be really, really interesting to uh, to get your your take on it. Um, and it comes from Mark Williams, who uh, who was one of our winners last year, the founder of uh, a, a company called Limart. Um, and he says, uh, as an entrepreneur, it's easy to get sucked into the business and work 100 percent of the time. How do you manage your work life balance? Uh, uh, it's a question asked all the time. It's very difficult. And People say you need to have a balanced life. Being an entrepreneur and selling a business, you're not going to have a balanced life. And I don't want to tell people to say, uh, you know, do this, stop working at this time, because you have to make your business a success. And there's, there's people out there maybe working twice as hard as you are to try and get it done. If you really believe in your vision, do as much as you can. Focus, of course, you, you've got to spend time with your family. You have to take that into account. Uh, but as your business becomes bigger, you will spend more time and then do that. And, you know, uh, it depends what's most important to you. Is it getting this product out there and being number one? And, you know, is that the most important thing? Or is it balance and great time with your family? That's important. Um, but yeah, do, do, do that. And I think having breaks is important as well. So you don't have to go away for two, three weeks, go away for two days or one day, just have that, um, you know, time away to, because that also helps you put things in perspective in your own business in terms of being reflective as to thinking outside the box and what else you need to be strategic about it. that bad time. Or even if you do go on holiday, you know, spend 50% uh, of your holiday working uh, and 50%, uh, uh, you know, relaxing. So I think these days are very difficult to completely shut off from your business. Um, you can't just take those five, six days off, completely not do anything. I think, you know, 50% or 30% work during those days because things pile up these days, emails in your inboxes are, you know, if you don't deal with them for like four or five days, it's uh, you're always in the back foot. So I think always do a bit of work and still at the same time, try and find uh, a balance if you can for your mental sanity because you don't want to go crazy at the same time. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, we've got another question it's from... We'll take some vitamins to, uh, to keep you healthy and energetic. <laughs> um, we've got another question from uh, Ayash, uh, who's another one of our winners from last year. Um, he says, hi, Tej, thanks for the talk today. Uh, any tips for a teen entrepreneur? So he won, uh, won one of the um, regional young entrepreneur of the year categories last year. Uh, any yes, essential yes, tips yes. for a teen entrepreneur entering into their first business negotiations? Um, and uh, quite interestingly, is there anything that you wish you knew before you went into your first negotiations? I think, you know, well, congratulations on the, on the award. And I think, um, firstly, there's no other better time in history to set up your own business and be an entrepreneur than there is today in terms of being able to get your products to customers directly, you know, digitally. And of course, um, <clears throat> negotiations as well. So I think for me, the most important thing is understanding what the other person really wants, because if you don't know what they want, you could be on a different tangent altogether trying to negotiate where it's not even important to them. Um, so that is the key really as, a, uh, as an entrepreneur starting out doing your first negotiation, what is important to them? And more importantly, what's important to you to get your business out? Is it for instance, to get more, more clients, which means then in that case, you're, you're willing to do a better deal uh, on the basis maybe that other party will, will allow themselves as a case study to, to use them to market your product so you can give them a discount. That is, if that's the most important to me, then I'm not gonna to negotiate too hard on price. I'm gonna negotiate, what can I get out of it? How are they gonna, are they gonna share it on their social? Are they going to you know, talk about other customers, get me another client? Those are more important to me. So finding out what's really important to you and what's important to them, I couldn't stress that more enough that uh, you know, starting out. Yeah, brilliant. And, and I think, um, well, we've, we've had quite a few uh, questions about some of the most common mistakes uh, that, that you've seen, but I guess you, you probably kind of covered it there it is that um, that aspect of, of not understanding uh, who you're negotiating with. I, is, is that what you would say is kind of the, the most common mistake you see? Yeah, I think people uh, or over negotiating or under negotiating, you know, you, you, you know, you might get with an inferior product, you don't want that or you don't want to not get a deal. Those two things are important. And sometimes, you know, giving something for free sometimes works really well, because 
people feel they need to reciprocate or they need to, um, you know, be, be some sort of obligation as to it. And I remember um, a football club, um, Manchester United, they, they wanted uh, to look at sponsorship with Wellman, a brand. And so they sent me this whole beautiful black football with a Wellman logo on it, you know, shirts for the team with Lalvani on the back of it. And it immerses you and makes you feel and gets you excited. I didn't do the deal, unfortunately, but it was uh, things like that. They don't cost that much, but the personalization and it feels someone's gone to that effort makes the other party think, you know, okay, I'd like to do business with them. So that's an important way to build, I think. Oh, that's that's um, that's excellent. Um, uh, there's a question from Andy uh, who asked uh, how important uh, body language is in negotiating. Um, well, it's key in terms of building a rapport. If you're sitting there, not communicating, talking in a low voice, sounding disinterested, you know, I don't want to do business with someone who doesn't look to be interested in, in doing a deal with me. Um, you know, so I think energy is important. Uh, engaging with the other person that's important, uh, looking them in the eye, you know, being passionate about what you're providing because they know that you're going to, that the, the other party will know you're providing a good service that you take pride in what you do. So I think all that really helps in terms of building a rapport, being likable by the other party as well. And um, yeah. Brilliant. Uh, we've probably got time for maybe two more. Um, one from Sarah uh, who asks, uh, how important is uh, is a positive mindset and self belief uh, heading into negotiations? Um, and secondary, have you ever managed to negotiate successfully, having gone into uh, gone into negotiations, perhaps not feeling uh, particularly confident? Uh, mindset is key in terms of getting what you want because that will allow you to be resourceful to think how you can get a deal done. So there was a real estate transaction which um, I was looking to um, to transact. It was a building. I really was keen on wanting to, to get it. And the, the previous buyers for that property had fallen through. The vendors were completely frustrated. They wanted to develop it. And it's a big institution in the country who, who owned this. And they, um, you know, like, we're not selling it. Um, it was my mission to try and get this done. So I had to try and demonstrate why I was the right party to uh, and you need to want it and, and show you want to, to to get the deal so i got recommendations from all sorts of people to say i can prove and get this deal over the line showed financing got an architect to hire to look at the plans what the vision for the project was you know it took months i met the senior people and that mindset is important um to be able to to get it over the line and let the other party know that you're serious so 100 percent Brilliant. Uh, we'll have uh, we'll have one more. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, so this one comes from Mike. Uh, we'll end with this. Um, so it says hi, Ted. Great to hear from you, and thanks for joining us. Um, to what extent does gut feeling and intuition play a part in your negotiations? Do you try and avoid becoming emotionally involved? Yeah. So emotionally, to keep your emotions aside in negotiation. Um, bring the passion out, but not the emotion, because, uh, you know, you, you don't want to be, emotion could get you aggressive, could get you uh, upset about it. And you want to keep that aside. You want to keep it as calm, as collected as possible. You know, you want to say, look, it's a take it or leave it deal. It's not going to make a difference whether you don't get it, but, but not too much in being arrogant at the same time. Um, so I think, you have to control your emotions going into into a deal and knowing when to walk away you know if it's not making financial sense i'll walk away and you can always come back to a deal later um so it's not uh, now or never and people will create the illusion sometimes that if you don't get this deal now you're going to lose out and, you know deals always come through things always happen of course if there's something that you set your mind on and that's very different uh, but otherwise uh, it's best to play that you're you know it's it's okay if you don't get the deal. Brilliant. Um, and um, like I said, we've we've got a lot more questions, but um, but unfortunately, we just have not got time to get through them. Um, Tej, thank you so much for joining us today. And I think I, I speak on behalf of uh, of everyone who's attended and everyone who will watch the uh, the recording later to say that it's been a, a really really fantastic forty five minutes. Um, 
absolutely tons of advice in there for, for all our attendees. So thank you so much. Um, it's been a real pleasure. Um, and with that, I will, uh, I will pass back to Chloe. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you so much, Ted, for taking the time out to come and speak with us this afternoon. What an incredible session it has been. Uh, before we sign off, um, if you wanted the audience to come away with one clear takeaway from this session, what would it be? Uh, I think I've said it before, and really it's understanding what your needs are and what your your other party's needs are fundamentally, and uh, and try and ask your questions as much as you can to try and find out their needs to do your research, because that's going to make a, the negotiations a lot quicker. You're going to get a better deal and a better, better result at the end of it. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Our next light bulb session will be at the same time next week with founder of Snaffle and Pig, Nick Coleman, as he discusses how to win retail listings. If there is anything you'd like to catch upon from today's session, we'll be sending out a replay of this recording later on today. You can find the replay and future sessions at www.lightbulb-sessions.haysummit.com. Thank you very much for joining us today and thank you again, Tage and Jonathan.